Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. I have upgraded the entire install and hopefully I've gotten everything right. So far so good as far as how it looks. Oh wait, uh, those icons disappear when I hover over Kerbal Alarm Clock. Okay, well anyway, the alarms are all in Kerbal Alarm Clock. We've got our build list. Everything seems to be in order as far as that's concerned. Um, we have technologies unlocked, uh, you know, it could have been the case that everything uh, ended up being locked for some strange reason. Uh, the engines are in the nodes I expect. By the way, we have unlocked the RL-10 here. Uh, we haven't paid for it yet, but we've unlocked the technology, so that's an interesting fact that we might want to take into account. The next engine technology I want is uh, this heavy orbital rocketry, not actually for the heavy rockets, it's actually for the lunar module ascent engine there and descent engine. So um, I, those are the engines I want because maybe there's still a chance for us to beat uh, 1969, you know, the, the Apollo 11 date in order to land a Kerbal on the moon and bring that Kerbal back safely, but that's pretty tight. So actually that's going to be my focus in this episode building such a rocket and testing not not the rocket that would send the Kerbal but first we need to uh, land a uh, uh, probe because we only have 81.5 science we could probably get some science from our other probes and such but 81.5 science and I want to get the remainder of the 120 science I need to unlock this technology by landing a probe on the moon uh, so that is the plan now that could be tight as far as the time constraints are concerned because we have to we have to unlock the technology no, first we have to build the rocket so that's got to take like 100 days then unlock the technology could be like 300 days and then uh, build the uh, uh, build and test the uh, Kerbal rated rocket so let me get to that let's check that all our parts are in order uh, now one thing I'm hoping in upgrading is that the NK9V engine that I was trying to use uh, from Bobcat Soviet Engine Pack, hold on this is a little bit uh, ambitious, uh, let's uh, take a look at that engine. I hope that its decoupling issue is resolved. So we had this unlocked but I was unable to use it because the next stage failed to decouple. I'm hoping that now that I've upgraded everything and I'm using the latest version of Bobcat Soviet Engine Pack uh, that I can use this. So we will see, but uh, you know we we don't just have to rely on that. We've got a lot of other interesting things like the RL10, which will be a huge benefit assuming we have cryogenic tanks, which we probably don't right now. But let's unlock that. Ooh, let's take a look at our contracts to make sure that we have the right contracts still. Now don't forget we still have a maneuver to do for our Navigator 5, that's in 41 days, it's on its way to Mars. I don't think it's going to do what it was supposed to do at Mars, but we might as well pay attention to it when that happens. So active contracts except for the generic ones, Deimos flyby, Phobos flyby, Deimos landing, Mars landing, seems like the right stuff, and uh, those are in a few years. If we take a look here, we can get this contract for a science day from surface of the moon. Uh, I'll pick that up uh, anyway, duration 10 years is fine. And do first docking hmm. could contemplate that, but that's only in one year, that's pretty tight. So that's an interesting one, but the only lunar landing option that we have is this crewed lunar landing, and we need to do that in a year and 187 days, so we can't possibly pick that up, otherwise we'll uh, get that huge failure penalty, and yeah, we, we just don't have the technology for that right now. But hopefully it'll, uh, he'll, be, he'll be back by the time that we can do it. Maybe this docking is not a bad idea. But I, I want to do other things in the next year. Again, that, hopefully that's another contract that we will see again. Alright, so I have built my little lunar landing probe. I've called it Lunatron. It's got just the basic uh, four scientific instruments on the top, four antennae, um, early controllable core, the Ranger Block 1 core here, and of course the 1 kN thrusters and little thrusters for orientation. 
but I've encountered my first issue with uh, 1.1.3 and that's the fact that I can't load this radon launcher. You can see I click on it, it doesn't load. I tried to load a craft with the radon launcher, it wouldn't open. Um, let me try it out. Okay, so Lancer doesn't work. Oh wait, Lancer worked. Um, this is the Lancer, right? Yeah, it is. Okay, so Lancer works. I'll be patient. Tiger 2 doesn't work. Tiger 3 doesn't work. This Atlas does, but it's only 8 parts. Um, so yeah, that's interesting. Something about the Radon Tiger 2, Tiger 3, probably an engine, uh, but it's, it doesn't say, when I try and load a craft with it, it doesn't say that it, there's a uh, missing part or anything. So that's, uh, I'll, I guess I'll just make a new launcher, but I'm hoping that test flight will still have data for the launchers, right? I don't want to have to start from, well, it wouldn't be too big a deal, but, you know, I would prefer if we still had all of our data points on all of our engines. Now, so I'm going to have to build a launcher from scratch, I guess, which is not the worst thing. That's part of the fun anyway. Uh, now, you might wonder why I didn't put a reaction wheel on here. And that is because the small inline reaction wheels, as I've uh, complained about in a previous episode, are insanely expensive. Uh, so this whole probe is uh, 5,551. This reaction wheel would be 2,500. And that's not just the cost. Remember, the cost is always associated with the build time. So if I added that in, it would add like 17 days to the build time. Um, I even have to consider whether to put four solar panels or just two, because the solar panels are not the cheapest things either, as far as, well, I mean, uh, these are 450. Maybe I could just use these 250 ones, and they'll be cheaper. These give 189 watts. These give 121 watts. Feels like it's... I think I can get by with two of these bigger ones, but I wanted some redundancy just in case, you know, something breaks on launch or something like that. So, yeah, but that, that takes a lot of build time if you take a look. Without them, it's 23 days. And uh, with them, it is 35 days. Okay, well, anyway, looks like I have to build a launcher now, so let me get to that. Alright ladies and gentlemen, what I've built is a very Russian rocket, very Russian. And we want to try out the NK-9V here, so that is our second stage. And I think this may be our first two-stage to orbit system in this series. And the reason why I want a two-stage to orbit system is because it doesn't take as much time to build it. Because three stages means an extra stage of engines and controllers and all that stuff. Uh, so it's a 60-day build which is really good. Uh, so the probe is up here, as you saw before. Again, two Astros engines because I wanted to limit the burn time. Possibly the burn time need to be limited even lower than that, but uh, that just means I would have to slap three engines on it. It wouldn't matter too much. Um, yeah, so there is the complication that I had to put a procedural structural element and struts on here uh, in order to connect it to the fairing base because there's no central engine to attach it to. So that is a little bit annoying. Otherwise, uh, like I said, NK9V stage. The NK9V burn time is limited to four minutes. Oh, I need to paint this bit. So that's why it has a four minute. Otherwise, I'd definitely make the burn time longer. But it looks like it's only safe for four minutes. So that's why that's like that. And it's got the little uh, Thor avionics package there which should be good enough. The question is whether it can separate properly. It didn't in the last version. Hopefully it will in this version. Uh, at the bottom here you can see why it's a very Russian rocket because not only do we have the NK-9V as a second stage, we have four proton engines, RD-253s, as our first stage. These are just procedural structural elements. This is the tank and UDMH N204. Very basic. Uh, the burn time required me to have this sort of arrangement. Uh, this is the burn time limit. Now there is a bit of a hitch in that I would really like to be able to shut off two of these engines in order to limit the thrust to weight ratio but that means that uh, the two remaining engines would go over their rate of burn time. So maybe we'll just have to put up with the high thrust to weight ratios 
Certainly this is not a human rated or Kerbal rated rocket, so there is that. We will have to create a different rocket for that situation. Okay, uh, so the plot of this again is to try and get signs from the moon so that we can unlock that extra technology with all those other engines which will help us out in sending a Kerbal to the moon. Alright, uh, so that's to orbit. Um, we, we have too much Delta V really to get to orbit. It's a bit excessive. I could possibly get away with just three engines but uh, down here, but it wouldn't look quite as good. Right? Yep. Um, we could certainly put a heavier payload, but I don't see a reason to at this point. This is more than enough Delta V, I think. And yeah, yep, that's about the Delta V I want. The trouble is the NK9V doesn't restart, I don't believe. It only has one ignition. Otherwise, it could start us off on our path to the moon. But yeah, it doesn't restart. So either we would have to continue burning it and just overburn and hope that we're pointing in the right direction or, or we just have to dump the extra fuel. Okay, so that is the idea. I haven't named the rocket uh, especially yet, so it's just called Lunatron for now, uh, which is sort of sort of typical. Uh, Soviet rockets uh, used to be basically named the same as their payloads, so we will build one. I've moved it up in the queue so it builds first. Uh, we've got this other navigator and Rodon on the Rodon, but I don't even know if the Rodon's gun... Radon, sorry, not Radon. Uh, okay, not Rodon, Radon. Uh, I don't even know if that's going to work. Actually, I think I should probably cancel that because, yeah, it's for the Mars trip, but or the Venus trip, maybe. But uh, the Radon rocket probably doesn't work anymore, judging from the fact that I can't open this file. So I'm just going to scrap that. Yeah. And we'll have to do something else. Um, now, I would like this rocket to be built... But well, it doesn't really matter if we do the maneuver first or build this. Um, yeah. But notice that we don't have any solid rocket boosters. Otherwise, uh, I would have used some boosters probably by now. But, but yeah, we don't have those yet. I think I want to upgrade the build time. I want to have it finish quicker. So I'm going to buy some upgrade points. We've got a lot of funds after all. We've fulfilled many missions. I'm just going to get uh, 20 first. Let's see what that does for our our R&D. Mm. Yeah, let me just pour it on in the R&D. Let's get that thing to 0.4 maybe. Okay, we're at 0.4 now. And as far as the VAB upgrades, Let's get to three build points per second. I think that's reasonable, right? And our rockets are pretty cheap. You saw that the one we're launching right now is about 11,000. We've got a million, so we could launch uh, almost 100 of them. So three build points, and that means that we'll get the Lunatron done in 44 days, which is really spiffy. Uh, of course, there's a high chance that the engines are going to fail, uh, so we would like those data points. Uh, so, I'm just going to time warp and then we're going to do the maneuver for that and then we'll launch to Lunatron. I, I just got to the vessel and it exploded. It looks like we probably won't be able to visit any of our previous missions after updating. So, catastrophic failure of the Navigator 5, it just, it just went poof. It was done for. I, I don't know what to say. So, yeah, definitely close the alarm. Uh, we'll have to send another one. Uh, well, well, that's a, that's a very definitive explosion right there. Okay, well, that's how the cookie crumbles. And, of course, this is why I was hesitant to upgrade in the first place. And I'm still keeping a lot of series in 1.1.2, like the Exploring the Future and Soul System Colonizations 1.1.2. I think it was actually easier to upgrade from 1.0.4 to 1.1.2 than it is from 1.1.2 to 1.1.3 in installs where you still have a lot of craft around. Okay. Uh, well, let's work to complete and hope that the Lunatron does not meet the same fate. If it does, 
Well, I still have the old install, so we don't have to worry too much about that. But it would be nice to be able to use the NK9V engine. Okay, we have already landed a probe on the moon, so I just want to... That's mainly a test of this rocket system. So here we go. Throttle up, SAS is on. And it would be a nifty system because it's so quick to build. And here we go. Ignition. And launch. And the game crashed. Typical. Okay, so that ends up being not just a 1.1.2 thing, but also a 1.1.3 thing. The fact that it crashes when I try and launch something for the first time, uh, I, I don't understand it. But anyway, here we go. SCS on. Throttle is up. Uh, oh, we should line up with the moon, shouldn't we? That would be helpful. I mean, not strictly necessary. Oh! Our relative inclination seems to be pretty good. Okay, good times. Alright, here we go. Ignition. And launch. Uh, we seem to have some residual roll here. I should set roll to zero. Uh, we should have launched from Baikonur, but then again, the uh, Kerbal construction time is a little bit weird about that. Oh, I should turn much faster. Uh, the water... Uh oh. Okay, wait. I don't think we had any loss of anything. Uh, I think I've got a water texture problem. Yeah, the water looks a lot landy. Oh dear, yes. I've had this before a long time ago, but I don't remember what the fix is. Okay, much power here. High G forces. Hey, the engines worked. Set. And ignition. And separation worked, that's important. And we're good. Um, yeah, I've got some sort of uh, texture issue with regard to the Earth. But fairing separation, sure. This thing can carry quite a, quite a heavier load than it is right now. If we could uprate the burn time on this, it'd be spectacular. We could make a two-engine version. So, I finally get my NK9V, which I have always wanted. Okay, antennae. Hmm, I'm pretty sure I action grouped the antennae. But, once again, that doesn't seem to work very well. Okay, activate. Not too sure about the staging of the RCS thrusters, I guess that's okay, but we'll have to see how that works exactly. So far stability using that little structural element to connect the payload to the rocket has not been a problem. Now all we need to do with the probe is to make sure we hit a different biome than last time. Yeah, we'll have more than a thousand meters per second left over in this. And shut down. That will re-enter. Separation. And... Ignition. We're in a nice tight orbit here. Let's get the solar panels out. Yeah, I've got some texture issues upgrading from 1.1.2. I uh, it's a different version of RVE. Um, somebody else provided it, but it doesn't seem to be working right. Well, if this works out, uh, 
Sending payloads to the moon will be downright routine, huh? I mean, it'd only take about 44 days to build a rocket to send a little probe to the moon. It's pretty good. Okay, well, that's good enough for a moon periapsis. Okay, RCS on. Well, even though these RCS thrusters are supposed to be up there, they're still firing. So I haven't quote unquote staged the RCS thrusters up here, but they're still being used. I really don't like that. Also, I can't click on this tank to shut off the fuel here. So I don't like that either. Alright, let's get going. Now I can. Doesn't seem like that fuel was used. It was the fuel up top here. It's probably not that bad. We will probably be all right. It looks like we were a bit early on this burn. We're about halfway through it and we're not at the node yet. Whoa. We've got a sudden rotation after I, I disabled smart ASS. I don't understand why it suddenly starts to rotate. Okay. Yep. Hmm. Just spontaneously decided to start rotating. And I was rotating with the engines on, so for some reason they weren't able to control it. Nor are the RCS thrusters able to stop it right now. Okay, looks like we can get an arbitrarily low periapsis. I'll take 44 kilometers. We need to hit somewhere that we haven't been before, so that's important. Um, this is really irritating. Stop that. Is it gonna... is it one of those rotational bug things? Yeah, I think it's gonna rotate on its own. I can stop it. And it starts up again. Hmm. Maybe this install might have problems. Uh, it's rotating pretty fast. That's weird, because uh, with uh, persistent rotation, I thought it wasn't supposed to rotate with SAS on. Right? Persistent rotation is supposed to turn off when SAS is on, but it's not turning off. Is that a setting in persistent rotation? I'm just going to deactivate it right now. Just in case. It's a relatively fast trip to the moon. Okay, we are in Lunar SOI. And where did we land the other one? There it is, Moon Tot. So we can't land there. Probably over here we find, but unless it's all lunar seas, in which case maybe I should land like here instead. But then again, with this inclination, we can't do that. Hmm, maybe I should change my inclination right now. Yeah, it's starting to rotate all on its own. Okay, something like that will be fine. But yeah, rotation. I mean, spin stabilizing is nice and all but only when I want it to happen. And here I've got persistent rotation happening when I just, I had turned it off. See, it's not activated. How, how the heck is it rotating? Is, did they quote unquote fix that in 1.1.3 or something? Now we get rotation while we're time warping? Um, I didn't realize that. If so, maybe I should take out persistent rotation. Maybe it's causing like some sort of issue. I don't know. Okay, gotta make sure about communication lines. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, we, we won't have communication at periapsis. Uh, unless we can communicate through Trinket, which is over there. Well, let's see. Uh, now we're rotating. Mm, we might be able to, yeah. It's getting a little bit stretched here. 
Ah, we lost communication. Don't worry, I will regain it once we're beyond this horizon issue, but it looks like we won't be able to burn at this periapsis. Okay, now we've regained it. Let me just add a maneuver. We'll add a radial burn to adjust this situation. Uh, maybe I should just get into a loose orbit and then adjust instead of doing that radial burn. So if anybody knows about this whole rotation thing, that, that might be helpful information. Otherwise, I might have to go back to 1.1.2 because um, probably on landing, this is going to be a bit of a problem, huh? Now, Smart ASS can hold on to it, but SAS can't. I wonder if it continues rotating when SAS is off. Yeah, it still wants to rotate that one direction. Um, let's see. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so it's not SAS's fault. It's just that SAS can't deal with it. Let me get some ambient light adjustment here. Okay, we have communication here. Let's bring it down a bit more and then we can land. Can I transfer fuels yet? Looks like I can. That's good. That'll improve our delta V somewhat. Alright, let's try this thing. Yeah, might not be quite where I want to land actually. Oh no, the arc was going further than I thought. Okay. Alright, once we lose these engines it's going to be tough times. Unless it was causing the spinning, which I doubt. Well, let's check. Fortunately, I had the intuition to make sure I had some thrusters that could control spinning on this thing. So we've got that. We're not hopeless here. Oh, it's having all sorts of problems trying to control this thing. Yeah, it looks like now even Smart ESS can't stop the roll. It's not really trying though. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey, come on. Sometimes I feel it's not even trying. Yeah, uh, uh. Maybe I should just not let it control roll. I'll do that. Uh, I'm not sure that SAS would do any better, but let me just quickly try it. I just needed to hold it steady, really. I know it can't control roll. I'll take care of that, but... Well, we are going to coast down for a bit. Oh, come on. Go down. It's alright. We have landed. Okay. We have landed. Yes. It's still rotating. It is still rotating. I, I'm not liking 1.1.3 too much at this point. Um, the stop rotating now, well, I guess because it's sort of dug in there. Alright, let's see what science we get. We need at least 40. 
record impact data moon surface okay that's not biome dependent uh, I guess sinking feeling here okay moon's midlands good 24 science transmit excellent temperature that is biome dependent 24 science and we've got the requirement excellent and pressure data that is also biome dependent okay all right and of course analyze telemetry that's 18 I don't think analyzing telemetry here there's a range safety option yeah that doesn't do anything what the heck does range safety mean ah well good thing we got the science from it first right okay so don't do that let's go back to the VAB so they gave us extra ways to blow it up but no no benefits on the actual flyability of it uh, you know the actual control that's a bit distressing uh, alright so let's go to the R&D building and get the science I was looking for heavy orbital rocketry wait oh there we go I was worried where, where are the engines I want okay there's just up there okay and the advanced Gemini lander engines too okay research that okay so we've got the science I want but I don't know about this whole rotation thing advanced construction well it's pretty close to being complete but I want to make sure that uh, this heavy orbital rocketry is the next one after that for the sake of our crewed mission to the moon so we'll move it up it's gonna take a while still we're talking about a year of uh, research there but that'll give us time to do the Mars stuff but uh, I want to make sure that when we do the Mars stuff, I'm not going to have the same rotational issue. So if you guys have any ideas, uh, please do let me know. Other than that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.